I'll be reacting to Sources of Star Wars Season 4, Episode 10 in 1, 0, go. And I'll give it a like 60. Well, as you're wondering. Ah, damn. When are they ever going to get good news? Dang it. This will feel bad for them all. My goodness. That's a big if, though. Well, thankfully, Cleo's tough, so the odds of something bad happening to her, while not impossible, should be low at the very least. Dun, 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 dun. I love how the songs sound so fucking cool. Dun, dun, dun. Like, my goodness. This song is like the perfect mix of fucking cool and urge. And plus, it makes the series out to be a much more epicer series than it actually is. To its credit. So credits to the visual production team for the opening. Because usually it's tough for a studio dean to make anything that visually engaging. But in saying that, even after all these years, they can still make opens that are absolute freaking bangers to their credit. So no matter what, they seem to almost always have that going for them. I don't know why, but whenever I look at it, I think of a freaking shark thing for some reason. Probably because I've been watching a lot of Dead Mounts play. And with all the characters obsessed with sharks... That story has just straight up been making me think about sharks a lot lately. Oh, what's up, Keanu Lobster? Thank you for joining the live chat. Puberty can be a bitch. Nah, I'm just joking. It's probably more to it than that. Whoa. I mean, I like that tense scene where he like moves Jack out of the way. That was nice. Yeah, when it's nice seeing both magic and orphan cast a spell at the same time. That is fucking badass. I kind of like this, seeing him compliment him, because that is a freaking rarity. That's true. I like this. Shows you how much he's grown, Orphan, and Magic, too. Now that he's got that much faith in Magic. Now 
That's why he's got magic. Yeah, he's not. I swear, I love that cheeky in his ear. Oh man, that sounds painful. Jeez. And I wonder why Jack looks like a fucking fucked up bastard because his parents were fucked up bastards. And honestly, who would have blamed him for running away? Anyone would run away from him in, in his position. I like how it looks so deformed, too. It shows you he ain't just twisted physically. He's twisted mentally, too. Which I fucking dig. Oh. I mean, the other are trying. I mean, it doesn't look like dog shit. It just looks okay, which, uh, considering sort of sort of an earth one doesn't have the highest budget, I guess it's the most you can expect from Dean nowadays. At least it's not a bunch of still shots, though. Hey, I'm actually being curious about this when it comes to Jack, too, actually. Okay, that's actually a damn good motivation, actually. I was thinking, see what he went through. His motivations make sense. Thing is, though, the man doesn't look like he wants to crawl out of it, though. That's the thing. Oh, yeah, definitely can't watch there. Yo, this music is fucking cool, though. What well, about going to play in this moment? That's the yeah. That's about one of the the voice casts and the music. Definitely, Bang Kim Webster. Definitely. Hey, that Ryan guy. He fucking deserved to be fucking wrecked. I mean, hey, and and orphans. Considering what orphans done, he has to consider that there are going to be some eggs. He's going to have to fucking break sometimes. Those eggs being people's lives, even if he doesn't want to, he's going to have to. Regardless. She's still freaking alive, though. That's the thing. Oh, boy.
Hey, I'd say Magic is more of a teenager than a child, but I could see why. I mean, his age. This motherfucker. It kind of does, though. He's indirectly involved in all this shit, so it kind of would evolve Orphan if we're going by technicalities here. I like it's like a naughty. Yeah, Lazy Folly knows why. What about getting trolls showing up in front of our boy once he has everything ready? I admit, I'm kind of impressed with this troll game. I mean, I'm not going to blame, but that was kind of fucked up. Tell me thing about your colleague. Okay, I mean, at least there's a limitation to him towards the bear at the very least. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of pain in the ass to get through. He actually, oh, he actually told him a little bit, though, which is better than nothing. Oh, this is like a bastard. It's like he's showing us a black like, hey, Yeah, Orphan, I'll give you some. It's like he's talking to the audience. But like, oh, yeah, I'll give you some answers. But you know what? Fuck you. You'll have to figure them out later. I'm like, this dude's a fucking bastard. And I love it. Oh, this is how you do trolling properly. Because some men, I mean, when they try to break the fourth wall, it's pathetic. They don't know how to fucking do it. This series does know how to do it. In spite of the series having problems, it can be entertaining sometimes. I love how he's so serious. I want to blame him. <laughs> I like how I essentially told Hartia, bruh, I'm thinking about more serious things than, than my fucking dick. You know what? This episode really made Hartia lovable. I well, almost like this because we see how much he really does care about Klimo here. Because the moment he said prepare to die, like everyone here is prepared to die, but then he instantly like has thoughts of Klimo. Really does show you how much he does care. He's come a long way from the open at the start of the series. And that's the type of character progression I love to witness in this series.
Yo, the music is like this music is fucking ominous. Whoa! Yeah, even I'd have to think call bullshit on that. Yeah, Tazilla should be always playing like shit. Three, four steps ahead. I mean, I shouldn't even oh, okay then. Although, if someone can be taken down, then can you really call them invincible at that point? I really don't think you can at that point. Ah, oh, Zillow, always talking, being big as fuck. She got a point. At least she's self aware. But to her though, she is an adorable bundle of fucking trouble, though. Yo, those all look like fucking beast-looking deep dragons. All of them. Adamant. That god looks pretty fucking powerful. Damn. That's all I gotta say. That's fair because it's everything's gonna be in super serious mode now. Hey, at least he's self aware. And also, that's like because she didn't really have to do it, yet she went through her way of actually training him up just a little bit. Doesn't matter, he absolutely forgets the warning. Because some young people be like that sometimes. Well, they'll ignore warnings or they'll go above their capabilities. Damn. I like that he's asking for favors without even explaining what the fuck is going on. This guy's kind of a dick. Yeah, how long of a spell is it then? Damn. Oh, shit. I love how he has no mercy, like, no matter which opponent he's up against. I gotta admit, I kind of like that attitude of his to not give a fuck. 
kind of always makes Corrigan fun to watch because he's unpredictable. Is he really sorry? Though he's probably just glad he wasn't harmed or hurt anyway. Come on, that is actually some ambition. Oh, my goodness. Guess I shouldn't be too surprised though. Like at all. Hmm. Yo, open up, we about to fucking uh, bust some ass. Oh, damn it. Right when I was getting to the cool shit. Overall, this is a cool episode. I'm actually giving this an 8 out of 10. We learned more about Jack's past, why the dude's a fucked up bastard, which, hey, I'm down for that. I was like when series actually build up their antagonists. But that wasn't also the only thing good about this episode. It was nice getting to see Corgon do a bit more. It was nice getting to see a bit more be put onto Magic's plate. I love how the season is making sure he isn't just some throwaway character. He's a character that's set up to actually make a difference. And plus... What can I say? Even though, yes, this episode had mid as fuck visuals, it didn't keep the episode from having some entertaining moments here and there. And that's why, yeah, despite some flaws, I actually enjoyed it to its credit. And it's definitely got me curious to see what they're going to bring to the table next week. Y'all can definitely bank on that for sure. Yeah, okay, now next episode looks like we're about to have some epic climax. And I cannot fucking wait. But anyways, thank you, Kia Monster, and everyone else for watching my video. And I hope y'all have a fantastic day or night, everyone. Bye-bye, y'all.